God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. We will begin. I won't hold you unduly. We'll do what we have to do, and I'll let you go and let you view your shows on Wednesday night. Uh, we will look at 2 John chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. First, 2 John, rather, chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. We'll continue with greeting uh, the elect lady. Greeting the elect lady. Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us. And even what you are yet to do, we thank you. Here I am, God, I need you to be with me. Speak to me and speak through me. As I speak to you, this your people, God. Give fresh manna from on high. There will be a blessing and strength your people, God. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name for your glory. In your son, Jesus, we pray. And we do thank you. Amen. Amen. Again, 2 John chapter 1, verse 4 through 6. I'll be reading from New King James, but I will also show projection uh, of the King James as well. Verse 4 says, I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I write a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. Verse 6, the last one. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is a commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Well, let's dig. There's some nuggets here. There's some good nuggets here. And all these nuggets are they're good, you already know. But this is just a reminder. Just a reminder. Again, verse number four says, I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in the truth. As we have as we receive the commandment from the Father. Look at this. Let's break this down. I'm going to read King James now. Basically the same thing as New King James. Basically. He uses, in the King James, he uses, he doesn't even say I, but in New King James, he uses I rejoice. I rejoice greatly that I have found. This is this, this. It was made very, it made me very, it, it made me very happy. <laughs> I was filled with joy when I met your children. <laughs> I was thrilled. I was elated. Let me add some adjectives with this. I was turning somersaults to find your children. <laughs> Walking in the truth. And I'll get to it. I'll take myself ahead of myself. John considered, or people considered John as uh, a spiritual father. And so at him being considered a spiritual father, him finding some of the young, not just young believers, really what he's talking about, young believers walking in the truth. And evidently, there were some who weren't walking, walking in the truth. <laughs> it's evident in the text. It's evident in the text. Evidently, some were not walking in the truth. Some were walking in something else. Mm -hmm. That should be real. They were, they were not walking in the truth. But John was elated and delighted that he found some folks that were walking in the truth. He was very happy. He was skipping along. Got something still going on with God. 
He was skimming along. And that one says, listen to this. When he said, children walking in the truth, connecting themselves with the truth. He found some people, some believers, who were connected to the truth. When there is connection, you will find results from connection. Whatever you are connected to, the results will show when you're connected to. Okay. If you're connected to truth or you're connected to the word of God, you're going to live the word of God. <laughs> if you're connected with something else outside of the word of God, you're going to show that you are not connected with the word of God. And so John is saying, I found some people. And here, are, let, me, let, me, let me do this from, from a leader's standpoint. I found some people who have been listening to what God has given me to say to them. I see them flourishing. I see them growing. I see them maturing. And I thought I was beating my head against the wall because no one's paying attention. But I found some people who were listening to what God has laid on my heart to tell them. And it makes me so happy. I found some people who were paying, paying attention. And not only were they paying attention, not only were they listening, but they were doing what they heard. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And it made me so happy. Watch this. Flip another thing before I go further in verse 4. It gave me encouragement to let, let me know that some people were listening. And it gave me encouragement that, that, uh, that people were listening and also not only listening, but doing what, again, God has given me to say to them to give them spiritual growth. And it gave me great encouragement as well as a, a great delight in their walking in the truth. Well, he says, as we receive the, com the commandment from the Father, as we have received, watch this. Now he says this is inclusive. It's inclusive. He says, as we have received commandment from the Father. He includes himself now. As we have received commandment from the Father. As we have received, watch this. As we have received instructions. What, what John is saying says, say, what I'm telling you, I'm getting, I'm getting from God. Yes. I'm not saying what I don't, I'm not saying what I want to say. That's, that's, that's key right there. I'm not saying what I want to say. I'm saying what God gives me to say. And so that as we <laughs> have received commandment from the Father, as we have received instruction from the Father, John rejoiced about the children walking in the truth. Hmm. The perfect tense of found shows that his information Remain true. Because watch this. Some of us told him. Some of them tell him. John. Let me, let me use my sanctified imagination. Old folks used to say years ago. Somebody must have told John. John, there are some people who have, have gravitated to what you've been teaching. Hmm. And so John now finds what they said to him to be true. And then he found out for himself what he heard was the truth. It remained to be true. <clears throat> and, 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 and they were walking implies a, what's it, a continual pattern. Let, you got to catch this. Walking implies a continued pattern of healthy spiritual life. And I just, uh, let me hang my head here for just a minute. Let me read it one more time. I want to I I I elaborate on it just for a minute. Walking implies a continual pattern of healthy spiritual life. Hmm. If we're going to walk, if, as we continue walking the truth, we will simp uh, simplify a healthy spiritual life. As we continue to walk with God, continue to walk in the truth, we will show a, a healthy spiritual life in God. Mm. It will show and typify that we have been spending time with God. We have been spending time in God's word. We have been spending time in prayer with God dialoguing with God and di God dialoguing with us. So a healthy spiritual life. Mm. 
You can tell who you can tell who has a spiritual life by how they live, how they conduct themselves, how their attitude is, how their lifestyle is. You will see how their spiritual health is by what they do, what they say, how they act. Through that. Well, as a spiritual parent. To many believers, John was always concerned about their welfare. Yes. <laughs> These young believers were walking and carrying out, listen to this, carrying out their daily actions in the sphere of the truth. Their daily actions were carried out in the truth. Daily. Daily. It didn't say, watch this, it does not say Sunday. Yes. It says day. Mm -hmm. It needs to be understand that it means from Sunday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, let's do it this way. From Sunday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. Show that they have been walking daily in the truth. As God has instructed them to walk. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Their walk in the truth was the kind of life, oh, listen to this, their walk in the truth was the kind of life God demanded. <laughs> their walk, how they walk in the truth, they walk according to as God had demanded for them to walk and to live. Mm. When you walk with God and you walk in the demands or the commands or the instructions of God, means you love God. Because mm -hmm. yes, yes. if you don't love God, you're gonna walk in the way you want to walk. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't watch it, if you don't respect God, mm -hmm. I gotta say it again. Mm -hmm. If we don't, let's go this way. If we don't respect God, we're not gonna walk in the truth. But if we love God and respect God, we're gonna walk in the truth as the Bible has ordained for us to walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want, to just, I want to pose a question to you. Don't answer it. How much do you love God? Don't answer it. Answer, answer yourself. <laughs> this phrase, this phrase refers to overall teaching of Scripture. This phrase, this phrase refers to the overall teaching of Scripture. Teaching of the Bible. We have all kinds of teachings going on now in, the, in this dispensation in the 21st century. All kinds of teachings. But not all teachings are of Scripture. <laughs> all the teachings are not God-inspired. Because this right here is God-inspired. God-inspired. So how much do we love God? How much do we love Him to follow Him with all our heart, mind, and our soul? How much? If there are any add-ons, any questions, whether it be viewers, questions, add-ons, or you in person, any add-ons, any questions? Before I go to five? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. I found his encouragement in four uh, to the respondent. He said, I rejoice greatly that I have found some. And as you were saying, everybody is not walking in the truth. Mm -hmm. So that's encouraging to us to be found in that song. Yes, yes. That, that, a, a, a great point, great point. Because everybody wasn't following. Mm -hmm. Everybody wasn't walking in the truth. And that's what was a great delight for John to find those who were walking in the truth. Yes. Anybody else? No, 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 you? Okay, I'm running on the five here. Nobody else? I'm going to run. Yeah, my track shoes on. Yeah, I'm going to run. <laughs> Verse, number <laughs> Verse number five. <laughs> I got a question to ask everybody. <laughs> and now I plead with you, lady, not as though I write a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that you love one another. Question I want to ask y'all, who is lady? 
Who is Abel? Now, King James says, now, and now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. I got some sports scriptures here, too. We're going to get into that in a moment. Who is the lady? Who is the lady? Who is the lady he talked about? Who is the lady he's talking about? I beseech thee, lady. I plead with you, lady. Who is the lady in the text? Now, y'all should know that because we talked about it. Of course, it was a month ago. <laughs> when we talked about who she is. Oh, I got to go back all over again? I must done back. <laughs> huh? Okay. Deacon Jada said the church. I'm going to come back here in a minute. I'm going to mess with you. Anybody else? Was it a Christian mother whose children persevered in faith? Huh? Okay. I'm going to mess with him, though. Just for a moment, I'm going to mess with him. Anybody else? I was just talking about believers. Believers. I'm going to mess with you, too. Just for a moment as well. Anyone else? Who is this lady? Who is the lady? Nobody, nobody, no problem coming to you? You got some what? You got some back. <laughs> <laughs> what? So you said you got somebody to agree with you? I got your back. <laughs> Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's what, that's what he said. Oh, okay. I got your back. That's what he said. That's what he said. She said believers. That's what she said. Anybody else? Okay. What's your backup? Who's, who's, somebody, what did they say? The church. They said the church? Okay, I'm going to mention you. You sure it's the church? You positive it's the church? Without shadow of a doubt? Without shadow of a doubt, okay. You sure it's the believers? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing? Huh? Okay, never mind. I never worked for Keith Thomas on Carter Church, but a lot of people said their church. Okay. So but the believers are the truth. Okay. Truthfully, believers. Okay. Now, you sure that you sure with the believers? I'm gonna stick with believers. You gonna stick with believers? Yeah. Without shadow of a doubt. Yes, sir. Okay. And you agree with her? Both of them. You agree with both of them? Yeah. Okay. Why you agree with both of them? Because the church is the believers. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I just did it on purpose mm -hmm. because the believers is the church. Yeah. And it is the church. Because watch this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because when Jesus comes back, he's coming back for the bride. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bride is a female. Right. <laughs> because he's, let's do it this way in the natural. He's the groom. Mm -hmm. And he, the groom is coming back for his bride. Mm -hmm. And the bride is the church. John is talking about talking to the church. He uses the, the church as a female gender, which is what she is. To Jesus. And he says, I urge you. I plead with you. I'm going to do this way. Church. I'm going to go your way. Believers. Okay. Church slash believers. I plead, I plead with you. I beg of you. I beseech you. Hmm. Not as though I write a new commandment. I'm not writing anything new. What I'm telling you is not new. <laughs> But it was from the beginning. It was from the beginning. I, I'm not writing nothing new. I'm just repeating what was, re, what was wrote years ago. But what I'm doing is urging you to walk in love. I'm pleading with you to walk in love. Evidently, the church was not walking in love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same as you. Evidently, John is urging the church to walk in love because, and then y'all not walking in love. Okay, let's do it away. Y'all not walking in love in its totality. Okay, now can I just be real? Some of y'all is loving only ones 
Come on. Who are doing what you want them to do? Love, Not just be real. Love everybody. But if they don't do what you want them to do, you don't love them. But John is saying to the church, regardless, you are to love one another, each other. Okay. Let's go even further. It ain't got nothing to do with who's in your family. It ain't got to do with you love your family only. No. He says, love the body of Christ. Church, I'm begging you to love each other as it has been commanded in the beginning to love ye one another. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Before I go to these, before I go to these support scriptures, anybody got any add on? Even in the comments from viewers, you got any add on? I mean, this, 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 this here, what, John, this, this is it's serious. This is serious. Because if, since I ain't got the comments, I'll just run on some more. If you intend to go to heaven, if I intend to go to heaven, okay, so what? If we intend to go to heaven, we must do it as the Bible says, love one another. Because <laughs> if you don't, you ain't going to make it in. Point blank. But John loves the church so much, he's urging you. He's pleading with the church to love one another. It's one, it was from the beginning and it's right now. In other words, he said, I'm not writing nothing new. And what you what I what, what I'm re repeating back is still what's it, it's still re relevant. Oh wow. Let me go, let me deal with that. It's still relevant today in the 21st it century. In 2021, it's still relevant. God's work will always be relevant. Yes. It is not irrelevant. It is relevant. And we must operate in a, re a relevant word. For whatever age, whatever time it is, it will always be relevant. Mm -hmm. Forever. <laughs> Ooh, any comments in the animals? Any, any comments in, 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 in the house? Are you just your glasses? You just read your hand. I love those because I was just my glasses. Uh, I was just thinking how, you know, that's, it's not, which is a very good thing, but it's, it's the way it's written and the way it's saying from the beginning, let you know nothing changed. No, that's right. Nothing changed. It's not optional. You know how some people say, well, you know, I've heard somebody say, you know, well, I, they could have been hard to love. It's not optional who you say what you say who you want to love. I mean, you, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. One another. So mm -hmm. it's everybody included. I was just looking at that house. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Nope. That's correct. Something you said just, just, just triggered something in me. Watch this. Repeat what you said, if you remember. You remember? I was just saying how nothing changed. Go, 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 go before that. The option. Yeah, deal with that. Say what you said with that. I said that it's not optional. That you don't have an option. People like have options to love who they want to love. Yeah. It's not optional. It's just one another, which means that includes everybody. Yes. Did you say, did you also say that it. It's hard. It, it, that is hard. That's, that's the word. That's that, that thing, Lisa. Did you say, some people say it's hard to love? It's hard. Yeah, I, I thought that's the word it was. I want to make sure. I, I, I wanted to point that out for a reason. Because we say it's hard to love an individual. No, it's not. If we're born of God, yeah. whom God is love, mm -hmm. okay, you all know this. John 3 16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten Son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, watch this. <laughs> he doesn't say it's hard to love them no. who is walking in sin who is not doing his will, who is not doing according to the word. He doesn't say it's hard to love them. It's not, what's it? It's not his nature. It's not his characteristic to say it's hard to love. And if we're born of God, y'all don't make me take y'all there, because we just read it in 1 John. We just read in 1 John some weeks ago that God is love. 
And those who are born of God are doing as God does. It should be our nature. It should be our characteristic to love as God has loved. Because we are a part of him. We're not a part of us. Because when I say a part of us, it's our flesh. Mm -hmm. And the reason why people say that because they are operating in the flesh. And you and I, Paul says, I have to, this, this flesh has to die daily. I crucify my flesh daily. Because he's going to sit with you. She's going to talk with you. She's going to get in your head. And so you have got to, and I got to, every day crucify our flesh. If we want to please God, if we want to live a life that's pleasing to God, we have to crucify this flesh, this human nature, this cardinal part of us. Even though we say it's still there. How do you handle your flesh is the question. <laughs> what do you do with your flesh is the question. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, he says there is a war going on. There's a struggle here. There's a fight going on. My, my, my flesh pulls me this way. The spirit pulls me that way. He said there's a war going on. And so in that, in that sense, what he said, which one are you going to follow? Are you going to follow your flesh? Are you going to follow the spirit? Which one are you going to do? That's, that's the question Paul poses to us. I don't want to pose to us tonight. Which one are we going to follow daily? Anybody else? I'm about to go to six. Yes, ma'am. When it's one another and it's other believers, if you love Jesus, you can love Jesus in your brother and sister because their nature is Jesus. You, you sh it should be so automatic to love. Not, not only not hard, but in the spirit it just is because you love Jesus. And you see Jesus in each one of it, each other. And that's yes. unity then. You reminded me of something. You said something, Sister Lisa. Watch this. Y'all all know it. Turn to turn to First Corinthians thirteen and thirteen. And I, I got these supporting scriptures up there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna read those two. Then I'm gonna go to six. But but I, I, I have the wrong computer because I can I can have my son put it up. Mm -hmm. But it's all right. We'll, we'll turn some pages tonight. First Corinthians 13 and 13. And and, and, and why is somebody still fighting? Paul says, you know, you, you have the gift of tongues. Oh, let's just deal with that for a moment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You're going to have the gift of tongues and all that. You're going to have the gift of prophecy and all that. Have all those, watch this, and have all those gifts. But what Paul is saying, before I get to 13, those gifts don't mean nothing if you don't do one thing or if you don't have one thing. You're going to have, you're going to have the gift of prophecy. You're going to have the gift of tongues. You have all those things, which are great. They're great. They're good. But watch what 13 and 13 says in 1 Corinthians. Now abide faith, hope, love. These three. These three. These are great, these are great attributes. Faith, <laughs> hope, and love. Great attributes. But watch what Paul says. But the greatest of these is love. And so what Paul is saying in essence, if you don't have love, all these other attributes don't mean nothing without love. Mm -hmm. So at least you understand that Paul in this 13th chapter, which is called <laughs> the love chapter, he said if you don't have love, all these other things don't mean nothing. In other words, what he's saying, you're just going through the motions. You can have all those gifts, but don't have love, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. It means nothing. That, that's, that's good right there. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the, 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 uh, the, uh, the reference scriptures. St. John 
chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. St. John, chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Okay, let me check it out. So we're gonna turn some page. Or you have to turn your you gonna hit the hit the button on your device. <laughs> yeah, and this is Jesus talking. This is Jesus talking. Verse uh, 34 says this: But I am giving you a new commandment. Now watch this. What John is doing, he's repeating what Jesus said. Because John says, I'm not giving you a new thing. It's the same thing from the beginning. I give you a new commandment. This is Jesus talking. I like this. You must, I'm, I'm, I'm doing another translation, y'all. You must love each other just as I love you. <laughs> yeah. In other words, when I use this version, uh, and it's the, it's the uh, contemporary English version, he said, you must love each other just as I love you. <laughs> you must watch this. You must do what I do. Because I love you. Because I laid down my life for you. I love you. I didn't have to because. <laughs> What's the song you sang in the choir? Uh, by uh, Anthony Brown. Huh? He, girl, I'm about to run. I'm about to run. I'm about to, I'm about to run. Messed up. And let me talk to somebody. You may be an alcoholic, a drug addict, all those other things, but you are worth Jesus dying for. Mm. We were worth it. We may have thought we weren't worth it. Somebody else may have thought we weren't worth it. But God says you are worth it because I'm sending my very best. My son. Nobody better than him. I love you so much. You messed up. You jacked up. But I love you so much in your jacked up state. In your messed up state. I love you so much. I'm sending my son. And my son is going to die for you. That you may have life and have it more abundantly. You were worth it. <laughs> you were worth, watch it. You were worth me dying for. And you were worth me lying, loving. Mm, can I say that again? You were worth me dying for. And you were worth me loving. You. <laughs> I don't care what somebody says. You are worth God loving you. And Jesus dying for you. You are worth it. You are worth it. And if you are saved, you were worth it. But if you're not, you are worth it. I'm talking to somebody who ain't saved. You are worth it. Him dying for you and him loving you so that he gave his very best for you. Verse 35. Oh, I'm going to use the Greek to structure this word. He said, if you love each other, Every, everyone will know, oh, this is it right here. If you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples. <laughs> By how you love each other. But I'm going to use the Greek, Greek construction of the word. The word if in the Greek construction of the word means since you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples because of how you love each other. Hmm. Wow. Uh, you see up there where it says uh, 1 John 3 and 11? Y'all get it? Oh, yep. All right now. Listen to what it says. From the beginning, you were told we must love each other. From the beginning. That's John talking about. He's in, he's in 1 John 3 and 1. 3 and 11, rather. From the beginning, you were told we must love each other. I want to pose a question to us. Since we were told from the beginning, 
Are we actually doing what we're told from the beginning? And if we're not, let's start. Let's ask God to help us. Ask God to help us. Anybody on four, five, four, go to six? Yes, ma'am. One way that we, we can um, really get away from that is he just says what the word, as what, as what Jesus, what he did. Mm -hmm. He didn't yes. see us the way we are now. He sees us who we're going to be. And he looked, not saying he looked past our, you know, the sin, sin, he knows we sin, but he's like, that person's not going to be like that forever. I know how they're going to be. And when we can see past, what we see in the flesh right. of a person and see truly spiritually what God can do for that person. We may not know their journey, but we know God can change them. Mm -hmm. God can deal with them. Mm -hmm. It'll help us better to love mm -hmm. the way we should. Yeah. And, and, and let me add to that. A person has to have a mind to want to change. Yes. Have to have a desire to want to change. Mm -hmm. Have to have a desire and a mind to ask God, help me change. Help me do better. And as I do better, help me be better. For what's this? For your honor and your glory, that I may live a life that is pleasing unto you. Not to myself, not to anyone else, but that my life will be pleasing unto you. That you, Daddy God, is happy. <laughs> or are happy. Anybody else? Any comment? Okay. Let's run to six then. The last one. Verse 6 says this. This is love. That we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment. That as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. King James makes the same thing. And this is love. That we walk, I like it a little bit better because it says that we walk after. I like the word after. That we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Basically self-explanatory. Most, most, pretty much. Let me, let me just break it down for a minute. From the New King James, this is love. That we walk according to his commandments. This word according in the New King James means walk in harmony with his commandments. This word harmony, this word according, the word harmony means that you in step with what he says. You're not out of step, but you're in step with what he says. <laughs> Paul was giving instructions that they walk, in other words, walk in step. Walk in harmony. Walk in unison with his instructions or his commandments. Mm. Watch this. We should be ordering. This is this. We should be ordering our behavior. Dominated by his commandments. According to his precepts. <laughs> Again, in step with him and his word. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, in other words, which you have learned from the first, you should walk in it. To behave exactly, listen to this, to behave exactly in its spirit, you should be ordering your behavior. Okay. You should be ordering your behavior. Okay, this is what. We should be ordering our behavior. We should put our behavior in check. <laughs> I'm going to do it another way. We should be asking God to help us with our behavior that our behavior will be in step with his word. Mm. Listen to this. Love 
however, must be exercised within the guidelines of obedience. This word of obedience just keeps keep yes. coming up. We can't get out of it, can't get around it. It keeps coming up. We must operate in the obedience to his word. Mm. <laughs> the first phrase here defines love more narrowly as, as behavior that continually moves according, watch this, continually moves according to the standards of God's word. According to the standards of God's word. Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome right there. It is action for good. Of what is, it is action for good for another. Good for another. Functioning within the limits of all God's other commands. Christ commands to love. Christ commands orders to love. Christ does. God does. John did. <laughs> so we love one another. Any, any, any add-ons? Any comments? Should. Because if we love God enough and we love one another, we're going to obey what God says. Yeah, we're going to obey what He says. If we, if we, if we're going to walk totally in obedience, we're going to show that we love God. It's going to show, it's going to show that we want to please God. Not our flesh, not any other individual, but only God alone must be pleased with our life, with our love, with our love action. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. With our love action. Yeah. Yeah. I want to close with this and with this support scripture too from 1 John 2 and 5. Don't let nobody, and I've talked about it, I think it was Sunday. Don't let nobody change your mind, your heart. Obeying God. Well, girl, I wouldn't do that. Man, man, if I wouldn't do that. Wait a minute. What you said ain't what God says. What you say don't line up with what the word says. So I love you, but I'm gonna follow God. Because I love God more. I'm gonna still love you. But I'm gonna love God more. Because I, I wanna I wanna please him and wanna follow him. And watch this, the key word is I wanna make it easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to make it in. I want to make it in. Everybody, everybody says, I want to see him. Well, everybody's going to see him. And listen to me. Everybody's going to see him. The ones who ain't doing right, they're going to see him. But are they going to, but are they going to make it in? But everybody, everybody's going to see him, but everybody ain't going to make it in. I got to say it again. Everybody's going to see him, but everybody ain't going to make it in. I want to see him, and I want to make it in. Yes. And I want to do all I can with his help to help me to do all I'm supposed to do to make it in. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going. Y'all remember back in the day? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all came when I came up. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going. But it's, it's not about talking about it. It's about living it. It's not about talking about it, but it's about living it. Turn to 1 John 2 and 5, and I'm closing unless someone has a comment or a comment. John, 1 John, 1 John, 1 John 2 and 5. And what we find is, if you have a prayer request, put in the comment field your prayer request. If you have a prayer request, because we're about to pray in a few moments. If you have a prayer request, type in your prayer request in the comment field, and we'll pray for your request. Pray for your request. First John 2 and 5 says this. We truly love God. <laughs> oh, I love this. 
Hold up, hold up. Before I read, man, before I read, man, I need somebody to read another translation. I love this, this period. Oh, my goodness. I love this one. Anybody can read from King James or whatever version you got, except for the one I got. <laughs> you said, what is that? <laughs> Go ahead. What version you read? King James. Okay. This is, this is what the King James says. But who shall keep his word and him buried is the love of God perfect. Here that I know we that we are in him. I don't I need you to do this one. I need you to do me one more thing. I need y'all to catch this. Just look at the key, listen to the key, read the King James again. But whosoever keepeth his word in him very is the love of God. Perfect. Oh, it's the love of God. Perfect. Complete. Keep going. Hereby know we that we are in him. That we are in him. Okay. Anybody else got another translation besides the one I got? Don't oh, read one I got. So which one is this? <laughs> Nobody's got that version? Okay. I'm reading from the <laughs> contemporary English version. Watch what it says. We truly love God only when we obey. I want to read that again. This A portion of the verse 5. We truly love God only when we obey him as we should. And then we know we belong to him when we obey him. Because when we don't obey him, we don't belong to him. That's what the contemporary version says. Yes. When we obey him. We know we belong to him. Any add-ons? Any comments? No? Okay. Before I pray, I need to do, do, do a couple of announcements. All, all reports are due Sunday, the 7th. All reports are due Sunday. Uh, even though it's first uh, Sunday, communion, do what you've been doing to get your report to Sister Alice. Do what you've been doing to get your report to Sister Alice. One more time. Do what you've been doing to get your report to Sister Alice Ward. They're due Sunday. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. They're due. Sunday, get your sacraments together. Uh, it's the first Sunday. Uh, and these months are going back so swiftly. Because it's like we just started 2021, and we and we in a, a third, third of the year, a third of the year already. Uh, so get your, your sacraments together, and we will uh, do the Lord's, Lord's Supper virtually. So get your uh, sacraments together for Sunday. Uh, also. Um, That's what it was. Thank you, Lord. We're still in Lent. Give up something and replace it with something spiritual. Whether it be prayer, reading the word, uh, even fasting. Give up something. And I see some results from that. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day who uh, talked to me and said they really are into Lent this year opposed to years previously and how it is Cause them to grow in God because they're giving up some things and replacing it with something spiritual and they, they find themselves growing. So I want to remind you, Lent is all the way up to Easter. All the way up to Easter. Monday, no, yeah, Monday through Saturday. Sunday, you get a break because it's, it's a 40 day thing. They exclude Sundays. So Monday through Saturday, give up something. Give up something. Some people are giving up TV and, and all those things. Uh, so, and, I, and I, I really believe God. Come Easter, it's going to be off the hook. I'm going to use a secular term. Off the hook. Okay, I'm using a secular term, which is over. 
it's going to be off the chain. It's going to be off the chain. If we do what we're supposed to do in this Lent and come Easter morning, we're going to be off the chain. Yeah, we're going to be off the chain spiritually. A mighty move. I believe that. If we continue to give up something and replace with something spiritual. Uh, also, the fourth Sunday this month, church anniversary. Youth are to are taxed fifteen dollars. Women are taxed uh, twenty five. Men are taxed fifty. And let me say this: If you have not been given, start giving. If you have not been given through this shutdown or through this pandemic, I'm encouraging you to give because God will bless you in your giving. Ma'am and sir. And you go on our website or you can go on our, our Facebook page and see all the ways you can give. You have no excuse not to give. I've never said this before, I'm saying it tonight. You have no excuse for not giving. Go to those the, the, the church website or go to the face our Facebook page. It tells you how to give. How to give. And I'm urging you who have not been given. Or who was given and stopped giving, I'm urging you to get back to giving. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. I'm just urging you. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. God bless you. God keep you. Did you like to pray, friend? Okay. We're going to go ahead and pray. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us. And even what you are yet to do, we thank you. God, I pray in the mighty and awesome name of Jesus that you will bless God, us to walk according to your commandments, according to your word, and that we will please you. Our life and our lifestyle will please you, and you alone help us, God. To walk in love as you have ordained and as you have even showed us through your son in his life how we should love one another. God, I pray in the mighty and awesome name of Jesus, you bless our sick name by name and one by one. I speak and declare healing, health be upon their bodies from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet. I pray, God, that you'll bless those who are going through. Lift the burden and lift the load. Move in a mighty and awesome way, God. I pray, God, that you'll bless us as we're in this Lenten season, that you will help us grow closer to you, that we'll grow stronger in you, that we'll be the servants you are calling for in these last and evil days. Help us to God. God, I pray, God, you will just bless your people everywhere. Encourage, strengthen, uplift your people. God, I pray as we leave your house and go our various ways, get in every vehicle, bind every mechanical problem, dispatch your angels round about with your people, God. Cover us with your blood. These blessings we ask in Jesus' mighty and awesome name for your glory in your son Jesus we pray and we do thank you. Amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. See you next time.